welcome back to my channel my name is Jenny and I'm here today to give you my October 2021 TBR so um, I am currently quite overwhelmed with a lot of life things happening at this time and um, as I did in September I try to keep my October TBR really simple and not too challenging just to make sure that I'm able to accomplish it. Uh, at this stage with four months, three months left in the year, I'm a little bit behind my reading goal. And I mean, it doesn't really bother me that much if I don't reach it. I set it to 75 books for this year. And currently I think Goodreads informed me that I'm four books behind, but um, I don't think that's that big of a deal. I'm either going to make it or I'm not. I'm not going to stress over it very much, but um, I am trying to like up my game slightly and uh, just meet my goal this year if I can. And if I get to December 31st and I haven't, that's okay too. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Just kind of a fun challenge for myself to see if I can make it or not. Okay, so um, for October, I decided to participate in Victober as I have for the last three years, I believe. And um, I, I do not just read Victorian literature um, in October. Uh, in case you don't know what Victober is, I will put the link in the description box below to this read along that happens every October. But very basically, it is reading Victorian literature in the month of October. So um, for the last few years, I've tried to explore some of the very popular classics of um, this genre of literature. And this year I took a slightly different angle. Um, I'm also reading some popular ones, but I really wanted to do read something spooky. And so for my audiobook this month, I'm listening to Dracula by Bram Stoker. And I have already started it. We're only two days into October right now, or three days into October, but um, I already started it because it is an 18 hour audiobook. And I wanted to give myself plenty of time uh, to listen to the whole thing and not feel stressed about it. So I did start it earlier um, at the end of September instead of the beginning of October. Um, Dracula is, of course, the most famous vampire novel. The vampire novel that put vampire novels on everyone's radar. Apparently not very much liked at the time it came out. I believe it came out in 1897, or that could be 1894, either of those dates, um, because of its you know, sexual undertones and scandalous um, leanings. Uh, but it follows the story of John Hawker, who is a, a barrister and travels to Transylvania to uh, do some um, transactions with Count Dracula in his um, home, his capture, and his subsequent um, escape, and then uh, the people around him in England um, as they are awaiting, uh, or, or they there's this mysterious illness affecting a young lady and things like that. So um, that's Dracula. And um, I will talk more about it, of course, in my wrap up about my feelings about it. But um, suffice to say, so far, it is a highly enjoyable um, part of my reading experience right now. Okay, so my other book that I decided to read for Victober is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. Um, I wanted to round out my Bronte sister reading. I have read Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I have read Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And now I'm going to read Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. And I know that The Tenant of Wellfell Hall is potentially more liked, or I don't even really know where Anne's, you know, out of Anne's novels, which one 
is considered her masterpiece or her most popular. Um, she's just such an, you know, the underrated sister that um, I think for me, because Agnes Grey was shorter, I decided to go with that one. And um, Agnes Grey is um, and writing about her kind of governess experiences. So I'm interested to hear her perspective. I'm interested to read how she writes and compare it to Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre. I do feel like I need to reread Wuthering Heights because I read it when I was quite young, but we'll see uh, when that ends up happening because, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember hating it. I know some people hate it with a passion. I know some people love it with a passion. So it is definitely a book that brings up different extreme opinions. Um, but I, I really want to explore Anne Bronte this year. So those are my two Victober reads. Now, I am doing a um, sort of buddy read with another artist with whom I am making a collaborative work. And we are going to be reading The Golden Thread by Cassie St. Clair. That is a nonfiction book that covers a selective history of thread fabric making, fabric history, basically. Um, so it is not you know, extensive. It doesn't cover every type of cloth and how it was developed. It's just a very selective compendium of um, time periods and how those things relate to different celebrities and different things like this, it appears. So I'm curious to see what comes out of this read. That'll be, I think, my only nonfiction read for October thus far. Uh, okay, so to go along with feeling like I want to read creepy things, I've decided to read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, the one of the most talked about novels on booktube. Um, some people's favorite novel of all time. Uh, I want to find out where I fall in this, <laughs> this novel's love it or hate it uh, spectrum. And I know that it is related somehow to Jane Eyre. So I'm glad that I've read Jane Eyre and now I'm going to read Rebecca and let's see where things fall there. Um, I don't even know the plot of Rebecca other than there's a house and a lady and a marriage and some sort of a haunting gothic thing happens. That's all I know. I don't really want to know anything else until I've read it and then I'm gonna see what happens, see if I liked it, which is fun. I, I'm enjoying the fact that with both Dracula and um, Rebecca, I'm kind of getting to see where I fall um, in these different debates on booktube. I'm also reading The Boat People by Sharon Bala, and this is a Canadian novel. This was in the 2018 Canada Reads selections, so you know um, last month I read a Canada Reads book and the month before that I read a Canada Reads book, so I was just feeling like I was on a roll with um, reading selections from the Canada Reads competition, which happens in usually in March every year. And this is a novel um, set in Sri Lanka and Canada. And so it covers the arrival of a boat filled with refugees from Sri Lanka. They are Tamil refugees. And um, when they arrive in Canada, they are treated as threats. They are treated as potential terrorists coming from Sri Lanka to uh, seek asylum in Canada. And you have a couple different perspectives that you're following in this story. You are following Priya, who is a Canadian Sri Lankan, who um, has very much kind of has a Sri Lankan culture still in her family and within her life, but she doesn't speak the language fluently. And she's very much kind of a Canadian uh, in her way of approaching the world. And um, she is pulled into um, an immigrant refugee case where she is part of the team who are trying to advocate for Mahindan 
um, and his son, Selyer, who have arrived on the boat. So you have Mahindan's perspective, you have Priya's perspective, and you also have Grace Grace uh, Nakamura's perspective, I believe is her last name, and she is an educator. And so that's not quite a judge, but it's the person who hears the sides, uh, like both the crown side and the defendant side on why this refugee should be granted asylum. Um, and you have her perspective being someone who was appointed by the current government for this position. And she is trying to please the government official who appointed her into this position, but also has her own personal, you know, judgments and biases that are revealed throughout her process of judging these refugee claimant cases. So there's a lot going on. Um, but I, I think that, uh, it's got a really interesting perspective so far. I did start reading this and the reason I've already started it is because it is the in real life book club at my works, um, pick for this month and we meet on October 14th. So I wanted to get this finished by then. Um, so yeah, I will give you more thoughts on it in my wrap up. And the last book that I have on my list for October is Freshwater by Kweke Meze. This is the final read for my five-star African diaspora uh, reads. And I have already read and the Kweke Meze. You may remember uh, when I was reading for the book two prize, The Death of Vivek Oji. So I'm very excited to read her debut, which was Freshwater. Um, it had so much hype. It was so, you know, enthusiastically, um, embraced by booktube and I did actually start listening to this book a couple years ago on audio but I only got a few minutes in and realized that I really needed to be able to sit with the text because of the perspective that it was showing of Ada who is um, a young Nigerian woman I think you follow her from her birth through to her coming to the United States for university and she has a uh, uh, I guess most would say some sort of a split personality um, and so you are going through her and, and understanding her through multiple personalities and uh, through her experiences so I'm very excited to continue reading more Kweke Meze and uh, that should mean that my wrap-up of my five-star uh, predictions sh video should be happening sometime in October or November and um, that is all I've got on my list for now. I will certainly be reading more if I can, but hopefully we'll see if I get through all these. <laughs> so I wish you a very happy um, reading month, October, uh, if you're participating or any other fun, spooky reading that you may be doing for October. And I will be back again soon for another with another video. Thank you so much for watching.